Thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program, and I'm Daniel Davis. Joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio Program today is someone who's going to share with us not only extensive knowledge when it comes to herbs, but also extensive knowledge in how you can apply this wisdom into having a healthier, better you, especially as you're approaching and going beyond midlife. Our guest today has no official diplomas of any kind, as I read this from her website, and she left high school in her junior year to pursue studies in mathematics and artificial intelligence at UCLA and left college in her junior year to pursue life. She began studying herbal medicine in 1965 when she was living in Manhattan while pregnant with her daughter, Justin Adeline Swede. She also wrote her first book, Wise Women, Herbal for the Childbearing Years, now in its 29th printing in 1985, and published it as the first title of Ashtree Publishing in 1986. Today she's going to be talking with us about that experience and how we can apply the wisdom that she has to others so that we can actually live better, healthier lives. And I'd like to welcome to our program Susan Weed. And Susan, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Green blessings. At 63, <laughs> I am certainly beyond 50. <laughs> you know, it's really, it was interesting when the producer uh, decided to uh, have you on the program here. I thought to myself, this is fascinating because to me, you seem to be not only extremely knowledgeable from what I understand, but that you gained it through life experience, actual experience which is a real pleasure from the glutton of infomercials when it comes to you know health and nutrition that are out there touting all these things. So talk about your journey so people can get a better understanding of how you came to be who you are today. I grew up in Dallas, Texas, two blocks from the city zoo, and so I fell asleep every night as a child listening to lions roar and elephants trumpet. Ah, Quite the experience for an American a child. Mm-hmm. And there was a, um, a five-acre woods at the end of our block with a small stream running through it and cliffs and caves. And whenever life didn't treat me well, and that seemed to be fairly frequently as a child, I would <laughs> retreat to the woods. I would retreat to the stream and the cliff and the cave. And I always found that nature was there for me, that Mother Nature, shall we say, was really there to offer me um, security and peace and kindness, even if human beings at times seem to be offering me quite the opposite. It's no wonder then that um, when I was pregnant and opened up the newspaper to see pictures of thalidomide babies, and perhaps you remember these pictures, the babies had no arms and no legs Mm -hmm. because of a drug that their mothers were given while they were pregnant. And it wasn't even a drug to necessarily take care of a problem. It was just a drug they were given to have a better pregnancy. And so at that point, um, I decided in my pregnancy that I was not going to take any drugs of any kind or any pills of any kind at all. And um, that, of course, left me with a few minor problems, as most pregnant women have, and a real desire to find some way to deal with those. I went to the Manhattan Public Library and asked for books about herbs, and there were four in English. Had I read French or German, I'm sure that I would have found more. And actually, three of those books said to put basil with my tomatoes and deal with my cucumbers, which is a very good advice, but not exactly the advice I was looking for. And I smile. <laughs> I smile now because I've now written more than four books. There's Wise Woman, Herbal for the Childbearing Year. There is Healing Wise, my big green herbal for everyone. There's a new menopausal years, the wise woman way, which replaced menopausal years, the wise woman way, alternative approaches for women 30 to 90. And there's breast cancer, question mark, breast health, exclamation point, the wise woman way. So yes, a lot of it has been through my own personal experience, but most of it really has come from what the earth has taught me and what the plants have taught me. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a really beautiful way to put it because we have actually on the program started running a series based on the books uh, published by Cedar Press Publishing, uh, Anastasia, and there's a total of nine volumes of this particular story, and that's exactly what that story is about, is reconnecting us with the earth. And one of the things that really screams out, especially as we've been doing our show now for five year, a little over five years, is that... As you take a look at, for instance, the pharmaceutical industry, all they do is they go into nature, they pull something out of nature, they change its matrix, and then they market it because that's how they patent things so that they can make money and have exclusive rights. And you take a look at the fact that if we could learn to go into nature and understand natural properties, 
you could bypass all that and actually be a lot healthier and better off in the long run. Maybe. We have to understand that the process of making a drug is to find the active constituent of the plant Mm -hmm. and to then extract that active constituent. In the case of, say, Taxol, you're probably familiar with the Pacific U, and it was found to have um, the ability to destroy cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, The difficulty was that the constituent that was active... um, as is the case, in fact, in most cases in plants, um, was pretty scarce in the plant itself. And to make one dose of the drug, it required basically cutting down three trees. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we eventually learned to do was to um, uh, take slices of the tree into the laboratory and to treat them um, in such a way that they would actually grow a fungus that contained the active constituent and then to purify it from the fungus. And then eventually, we did learn how to create the active constituent ourselves. So it depends on which way you want to go. If we want to cut down nature to make our drugs and basically wind up with no nature left, we can do that. Or we can learn to create those drugs in the laboratory and leave nature for enjoyment. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's talk about uh, the process that you you usually help people with uh, about what people can do. Let's say someone who's past 50 who wants to begin to cleanse and and live a longer, healthier, more vigorous life. What can they do? Uh, Well, the last thing they should do is cleanse. Cleanse is code for damage and destroy. So if you'd like to live a, a short, unhealthy life, then cleanse. Um, it's the worst thing that you could possibly conceive of doing. There are no toxins of any kind in your body unless you're not urinating or defecating or breathing. And so long as those three functions are going on, then those functions are the functions that remove what you don't need. I represent the wise woman tradition. You're speaking from the heroic tradition. The heroic tradition believes that we live in filthy, toxin-filled bodies and that we have to cleanse them. (laughs) And the scientific tradition, of course, believes that we simply need to measure and to measure up and then we can be fixed. The wise woman tradition offers a true alternative in which we understand that we begin from perfection and that we can have further perfection, that we begin from wholeness, and that we can have greater wholeness. And the way we have further perfection and greater wholeness is to nourish. So we would never cleanse anyone. We nourish them, because it is my understanding that we are, in fact, perfect, and that the only thing that lies between us and manifesting that perfection is optimum nourishment. Mm-hmm. Well, and this sounds... is one of the reasons why cleansing is so destructive. Okay. Now, because that's what you tend to hear and see a lot out there as far as suggested ways to improve your health is first let's start with detoxification and then nourishment. And you're saying, no, it's actually just the reverse. You know, so what message can I I'm not saying actually it's do? the reverse at all. I'm saying don't cleanse. Okay, don't cleanse. Okay. Don't ever cleanse. Okay. Unless you would like to lead a short, unhealthy life. Okay. Very good. So then what do we do now? You're talking about... You nourish. Nourish. You you nourish. Okay. What is the single most important thing that someone past 50 can do to ensure a long, healthy, and vigorous life? Change what you drink. Okay. Instead of coffee, tea, fruit juice, soda, or even water, drink nourishing herbal infusions. Okay, and what are those exactly? A nourishing herbal infusion is not an herbal tea. A tea is a small amount of herb brewed for a short time. An infusion is a very large amount of herb brewed for a long, long time. Herbal teas are just fine, but they don't aid longevity or build health or bones or your circulatory system. Herbal infusions, on the other hand, are powerhouses of vitamins, minerals, proteins, and other phytonutrients like polyphenols and phytoestrogens. They're extremely concentrated in nutrition, and thus nourishing herbal infusions literally rebuild the body from the inside out. Specific infusions, of course, having specific ways to help rebuild the body. But the general idea is to make a nourishing herbal infusion each evening and drink it during the day. I don't know if it was you or the engineer. I called in one minute early, and somebody said, while you're waiting, take an herbal tincture. And I, aghast, said I would not do that. But what I did do was to pour myself a glass of nourishing herbal infusion. 
Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about what this can do as far as building or, as you say, nurturing a person's health. Yes. Well, because we are using a full ounce by weight of dried herb, which is the equivalent of a quarter pound of fresh herb, um, and because we are steeping for at least four hours, not with heat, but just in a jar, then we are able to truly extract from the plants all of their nutrients. For instance, a cup of nettle tea contains five milligrams of calcium, whereas a cup of nettle infusion contains 250 milligrams of calcium. So stinging nettle is one of my favorite herbal infusions. I call it the energy of the earth. It rebuilds the adrenal glands, giving us a tremendous energy that goes and goes and goes without any swings in energy throughout the day and allowing us to sleep and rest deeply at night. Nettle also restores uh, luster and health to the hair and generally within a matter of weeks changes skin texture, um, helping the skin and the lower surfaces of the skin to rebuild collagen and to give you uh, not only a youthful spring in your step, but a incredibly useful appearance. Mm -hmm. Now, and uh, you know, stinging nettle is something that's relatively easy to find, isn't it? Stinging nettle is extremely easy to find. Uh, generally, uh, people just buy it at their health food store, and you can buy it an ounce at a time, or if you're really going to get into drinking infusions, and I've been drinking a quart of nourishing herbal infusion daily for over 25 years, mm -hmm. then you want to buy your herb in bulk by the pound. You certainly don't have to harvest or dry it yourself, and we don't use fresh plants for making infusions. We only use dry plants. Okay. So now when a person goes to a health food store, then they just actually ask for the herb as they would actually find it. It would be, what, dried, or, or how do they go about actually Yes, getting... it would be the dried herb in bulk. Okay, great. All right, but let's think about it. If we used an ounce of herb each evening to make a quart of infusion for the next day, we would use two pounds of herb a month. Now, at the wholesale cost, that would cost about $20 for a month's worth of herbal infusion. Mm -hmm. When you think about the fact that Americans spent $27 billion last year on totally worthless supplements, no study has ever found supplements to aid longevity or to prevent any kind of disease, and quite a few studies have found that taking supplements actually increases your risk of heart disease and cancer and decreases your longevity. And when you consider that your average American is spending $100 a month on supplements and your kind of new age health conscious American is spending $300 a month on supplements, <laughs> we begin to see that $20 a month for nourishing herbal infusions is a very inexpensive way to go. You know, I was a little startled when you introduced me because you said extensive and it really sounded to me like you were saying expensive. And I believe that herbal medicine is people's medicine and it should be very very inexpensive. Exactly. <laughs> no, I meant extensive because, you know, as I was, uh, uh, share, as the producer talked about who you were, I thought, okay, this is great to have someone that has the kind of experience from the raw earth, as you said, uh, to be able to say, you know, look, you're going to hear a lot of messages out there. For instance, you know, how many out there have heard of shark cartilage as being the end-all, be-all to health of this? And you're hearing people tout all these supplements and different things that claim all these different things. But then again, you know, you take a look at supplements and you're simply saying, well, it's just not true. It just doesn't work as well or at all as they can prove as they say they do. And the author of the book knows that sharks do get cancer. Oh, okay. Um, but as he has said in interviews, well, it wouldn't have made a very interesting title if it said, um, most sharks don't usually get cancer. And once again, do we really want to wipe out every shark in the ocean so that a few people can take shark cartilage on the outside chance that it will get rid of cancer? I'm not willing to give up all the sharks for them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd rather that they took drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying earlier that you I mean, obviously about... I'd rather that they took herbs, but just in terms of shark cartilage, <laughs> which to me is a drug-like substance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Now, you were talking about that you drink about a quart of nourishing herbal infusions daily and that if you drink at least four a week, that a person will experience a profound change. Now, what do you mean when you say rapid and profound change? 
Well, as I said, the effects of nourishing herbal infusions can usually be seen within five to seven days in restored energy. Mm-hmm. better looking skin and healthier hair habitual use of course will result in deeper changes there's um, a woman who wrote to me and she was diagnosed at 57 with very severe osteoporosis and over the next three years between the age of 57 and 60 she actually lost three inches in height which is from her spine compressing down and her doctor was just you know really wanted to put her on drugs or calcium supplements or something. And she just, mm-hmm. she said it didn't bother her and she just didn't want to do anything about it. But she was um, feeling very tired. Her daughter had graduated from my live out apprenticeship. And so she asked her daughter if there were any herbs that she could take for energy. And her daughter said stinging nettle and taught her how to make a stinging nettle infusion by putting one ounce of dried herb in a quart jar, filling it to the top of the boiling water, putting a tight lid on it and letting it steep for four hours or overnight. Her mother started doing this. And within a week, she called her daughter back and said, wow, I feel like I'm 17 again. This wow. stuff is incredible. Mm-hmm. She, said, she said, are there any other herbs that I can make like this? And her daughter said, yeah. So she wrote to me that her routine had become, on Sunday night, she made a quart of nettle infusion and a quart of oat straw infusion. Now, oat straw is known as a sexual tonic, and many men consider it, in fact, better than Viagra as in terms of a sexual tonic. And uh, for women, it's especially good for the nervous system. And over 50 women, it, well, as one woman put it, she said, you know, once I got past menopause down there, it was kind of like um, the desert, you know, camels and sand dunes. <laughs> she said, I started drinking oat straw infusion, and let me tell you, it turned into an oasis down there, dancing <laughs> girls and date palms. So she started making a quart of nettle infusion and a quart of oat straw infusion on Sunday, and she'd strain them Monday morning, refrigerate them, and then drink them Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And Wednesday night, she'd make a quart of nettle infusion and a quart of red clover infusion. And red clover infusion uh, is the world's most famous and most effective cancer preventative and cancer curative herb. So far better than shark cartilage would be red cancer. And of course, as we get older, we become more candidates for cancer. So quart of red clover, clover a week is a really good insurance. She drank that quart of nettle and red clover, which she brewed on Wednesday night. She strained them Thursday morning, refrigerated them, and drank them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And she said she took Sunday off. So about three years later, her doctor says to her, she, he says, you know, I just can't figure out what's going on. He said, um, last year when I did a bone scan, you didn't have osteoporosis anymore. You had osteopenia. He said, and this year when I did your bone scan, you didn't even have osteopenia. As a matter of fact, you have the best bone mass that I've ever seen you have. He said, I just can't figure out what's going on because osteoporosis doesn't reverse by itself and you're not exercising or taking supplements or taking any drugs. What are you doing? And she said to him, I'm not doing anything. And then she said, as I was driving home and I thought, do you suppose it could be those herbs I'm drinking for energy? Mm -hmm. And of course, it is. Because the nutrition in these nourishing herbal infusions is in the form that your body can most easily use. There's no calories, high protein, and so by drinking a quart of nourishing herbal infusion a day, or she was only drinking four quarts a week, over time she had very deep and very profound changes. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about it too, Susan, a quart's really not that much. I'm sorry, say again? Well, I was saying when you think about a quart too, that's not very much. You know, it's just you know, thirty-two ounces, and bam, you're done. Most people drink more beer and alcohol than that. <laughs> right, and that was the first thing I said. The single easiest and most important thing you can do is change what you drink. Mm-hmm. When apprentices come to live with me, I ask them to drink their quart of infusion before they drink anything else. So they want something hot in the morning, heat up some infusion. It's fine hot. It's fine with honey in it. You want a pick-me-up mid-morning, drink some infusion. It's fine over ice. It's fine at room temperature. Mm-hmm. Right? It's fine with a little tamari in it. You want to drink something with your lunch, drink some nourishing herbal infusion. Mm-hmm. Right? And, you know, so then, you know, if you drink your quart of uh, nourishing herbal infusion, well, then you can afford to have your beer. Mm-hmm. Now, Susan, let's go ahead and talk about the steps a person was, would take 
they listen to the show as we've got listeners uh, sitting here and, and listening to the show. And so what is the first step as they step out of the house to go ahead and get started on this path? Because I know one is that you'll be giving a website later on where they can find out a lot of this information. But, you know, your typical neighborhood where you might, where you probably have a health food store as they're popping up everywhere, what is the first step they take? What do they need to do? Well, usually what I suggest is that you go to that health food store and you go to the bulk herb section and you buy one ounce of stinging nettle, one ounce of red clover, one ounce of oat straw, one half ounce of linden, and one ounce of comfrey leaf. And you take those home and the first night you choose one of them. And you put them, put one of those herbs into a one-quart canning jar. Mm-hmm. Fill that jar at the top with boiling water. Okay. Take a wooden spoon and stir the herb and the water together. Because the herb is dried, it will absorb some water, and the water level in your jar will fall. So then pour a little more water in so that your jar is truly full. Put a tight lid on it. Turn off the light and go to sleep. Mm-hmm. I usually do this last thing in the evening. If you're doing it in the morning, then take a look at what time it is. And about four hours later, or if you've done it overnight, in the morning when you wake up, strain the liquid from the jar, squeezing the plant material to get all of the good out of that plant material. Mm-hmm. The liquid is what you're going to drink. That's your nourishing herbal infusion. And because it's very high in protein, do refrigerate it. They stay good in the refrigerator for a couple of days. But you can't make an infusion and have it a couple of weeks later because, as I said, they're very protein-rich. As a matter of fact, I encourage people to think of infusions as, um, as like a blood product. Because it's as rich as blood. In fact, one of my uh, um, past apprentices, who's an MD, um, was in the emergency room one day, working the emergency room. And a fellow MD was wheeled into the emergency room. And he had lost 15 pounds of body weight to bloody diarrhea in three days, which is a very critical condition. And his electrolyte balance was very disturbed. And um, one of the interns asked uh, Dr. Mulvernty if they were going to give him a transfusion. And she said, no, that would actually kill him. What they were going to do was give him nettle infusion. She had brought her quart of nettle infusion to work with her. She hadn't even had time to strain it. And she just grabbed it and gone to work. And they uh, strained the nettle infusion and gave it to him, sip by sip, and continued to do blood work. And she brought me the blood work. And you could see the electrolytes, the iron, all of the minerals in his blood within 15 minutes start to go up. And within two hours, his electrolyte balance was just fine again, and he was sitting up and talking. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Now, when you were given the recipe earlier, do you just you don't use these together as you're mixing them? It's actually they're used separately? Exactly. So okay. you would make your stinging nettle one night, your red clover the next night, your oat straw the next night, your comfrey leaf leaf the next night, and then your linden flower the next night. The linden flower is a little different than the others, and we're using just half an ounce of it because we're not getting vitamins or minerals or protein from the linden. Linden is an anti-inflammatory. Okay. And I'm going to suspect that you know that most diseases are the consequence of inflammation in the body. Exactly. In fact, I was going to point out that there are a lot of, uh, I guess you can call them uh, networking marketing companies that are you're starting to see more of these natural, plant-based, science-based uh, products that are out there, and they're getting more and more to be in liquid form. And that's one of the things that they talk about very consistently as they're presenting you the product is that, it, that it's an anti-inflammatory and that that's the reason for a lot of diseases and sicknesses. Exactly. So that's why we have the linden in our ro- rotation of infusions. One of the reasons that I suggest that people start out by buying an ounce of each one and brewing it is that people have different tastes and different body chemistries. And so some people really like the taste of stinging nettle. We did at my website, which is susanweed.com, where, as you said before, there's a lot of information on infusions. Um, We did a little survey. What's your favorite infusion? And more than half the people said that stinging nettle was their favorite infusion. Mm -hmm. But a few people say, ooh, it tastes like spinach broth or it tastes too green to me. (laughs) Right? 
I don't especially like red clover. I drink it because I don't want to get cancer. But to me, it tastes like black tea, and I don't like the taste of black tea. But a lot of people love the taste of black tea. Right. And red right. clover is their favorite. Everybody loves oat straw. It kind of tastes like oatmeal. It's really kind of soft and gentle. And, of course, like oatmeal, it's really good for lowering cholesterol and for uh, increasing heart health and blood vessel health. And linden is just delicious. It's made from the flowers of the plant, and it's really sweet and lovely. Comfrey tastes good. The comfrey leaf tastes very good. But it has a kind of strange texture, which is both drying and wetting at the same time. And so some people say, oh, I can't drink the comfrey comb, but it's really good hot. And that's the other thing that I suggest to people. Not only try out each one of the herbs, but try them out both cold and hot. You may find that one of them you really like hot and you don't like cold, or another one you may really like cold and not like hot. Mm, okay. Now, are these, these are the basic herbal uh, uh, formulas that you have here. Now, does it get more extensive than that? Well, they're not formulas. They're single herbs. I'm a simpler. I don't use herbs together for the same reason that generally when I get in bed with a lover, it's just one at a time. Okay. Right. <laughs> I guess that's a good rule to live by there. Keeps it clear, you know. I, it's not that it's not fun to be in bed with a lot of people, and I've certainly done that too. But I've often found myself saying, whoever's doing that to my toes, let me know tomorrow who you are. Right. You know? exactly. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons that I don't mix my herbs together, because I want to know who was that doing that you to know, my toes. Susan, that really is a good point, because there are companies out there that produce, uh, you can call them, uh, you know, herbs by pill form, whatever the case is, but you see that they'll use several different herbs in one formula, and you're saying, no, keep it simple, just one at a time, and just use it this way, and it seems to me that the more simpler it gets, the more effective it is. I absolutely agree with that. I had a woman come to me, and she was taking an herbal menopause formula, and she was getting terrible headaches. And she said to me, what herb in here is giving me headaches? Well, there were over 22 herbs in that formula. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, well, just stop taking herbs in pill form. And as a matter of fact, I tell all of my students that. I say, if you you know, want to get the worst side effects from any herb, put it in a pill or a capsule. And if you want to get the least side effects from the herb, then use it in a water base or a vinegar base or an alcohol base. And I said, just, you know... Forget taking this stuff in pills and capsules. Just start drinking your nourishing herbal infusions. And she said, well, what nourishing herbal infusions? I said, well, you could drink stinging nettle or oat straw or red clover. And she said, those are all in this formula. I can't take any of them. They might be giving me a headache. How sad. Mm -hmm. How sad that now 22 herbs were on her don't call list mm -hmm. when only one of them was really giving her a side effect. I mean... You wouldn't say that strawberries were a bad thing to eat, would you? No. I wouldn't either, but we do know the occasional person does react to strawberries, right? Mm-hmm. And if that person had first encountered strawberries in a fruit salad and didn't know it was strawberries, they might reasonably be frightened of all fruit. Mm -hmm. Since we don't live in a culture where herbs and herbal medicine are a part of our, our everyday life, I find that using herbs simply means that we're more likely to use, use herbs safely. Mm-hmm. Now, how can a person learn more about herbal infusions and take the steps necessary for being able to get started on this journey? Well, they can go to my website, www.susanweed.com. There's over 2,000 pages of free information on herbs and health, especially women's health, including childbearing, menopause, and breast issues, as well as prostate issues and things for men. There's never any charge for any information at the website, and there is an internal search engine to help you find the answers to your questions. In addition, as I mentioned, I have four books available, Wise Woman Herbal for the Childbearing Year, Healing Wise, my big green herbal for everybody, New Menopausal Year is the Wise Woman Way, and Breast Cancer Question Mark, Breast Health, exclamation point, the Wise Woman Way. All of my books talk about nourishing herbal infusions, and there's a special part of the website that talks about nourishing herbal infusions and actually has links to people who sell 
these herbs in bulk so that after you go to your health food store and buy an ounce of each one and experiment with them, if you decide that you want to start doing this, you can start buying your herb in bulk and again, usually at a very greatly reduced price. For instance, wholesale stinging nettle is 10 or $11 a pound for organic stinging nettle. At most health food stores, one ounce, which is one sixteenth of a pound of nettle, is running 4 to $5. Okay, so what you're saying is that you have links there that can take you to what online sources where you can buy these more uh, factory direct, so to speak. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rather than, I, it's certainly worthwhile to go to your health food store, and many times, if you have a health food store that you especially want to support, you can ask them to special order by the pound for you and get a reduction in price. But it's still not going to be as low as if you open a wholesale account yourself. Okay, very good. That sounds simple enough. Now, you also list on there uh, probably an extensive list of herbs and what their uses or what their benefits are. And again, as as you've been saying throughout the program, you don't mix these things together. You just use them separately and you just kind of experiment. Uh, and just and either way, you're going to kind of come out good in the long run. Exactly, and that's why I'd love to tell the story with the woman who was just drinking four quarts a week and two quarts of nettle, one of oat straw, one of red clover, and completely reversed her osteoporosis within mm-hmm. three years. And she didn't even think that these had anything to do with her bones or her bone health. Mm-hmm. So my goal is a quart a day, but any amount of nourishing herbal infusion that you drink will bring you added benefit in your health right now and in your long-term health, and longevity. And again, as we were saying, or you were saying earlier in the program, don't detox. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> it just, I'll tell you, Susan, I, that to me, it threw me for a loop at the beginning of the program because we've done a lot of programs where they have programs for detoxification and body cleansing, and so you think that that's the right thing to do, and, and you're saying, no, just nourish your body. It'll take care of that all by itself. Exactly. And if you would like to pursue this further, I talk about the three traditions of healing in my green book, Healing Wise, and I'd be very happy to send you a copy. I would like to do that and and actually read this book and then invite you to come back on the show again. You know, it's not because we're trying to breach or beat up conventional wisdom. My idea is if something works, then stick with it. But I also have another philosophy is keep it simple. I think people just confuse, you know, health and nutrition and diet and this and that. You just, you're out there like a dog with 17 whistles blown at you and you don't know which way to go, you know, and it's whoever screams the loudest, has the biggest website, the largest ad, or the neatest infomercial. That must be the one that I need to pursue. And I think, well, you got so confused. How do you know that's the right way? As you were mentioning earlier, somebody who was taking in pill form a multitude of herbs and getting headaches. I remember my own mother, for instance, when I had her, uh, you know, on a process like that, and she just came to me a couple of days later, and she says, you know, I've got to tell you, I don't feel very good, and it was because she was getting overloaded with too much. And you're keeping it simple. That's, that's very commendable. We, yes, we keep it very, very simple. And again, you don't have to change your diet. You don't have to change your attitude. You don't have to change your clothes. Just start drinking nourishing herbal infusions. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting, too, because generally when I'm working, what I mostly drink during the day is water. You know, occasionally a little soda, you know, here and there, but it's so rare, you know. But the fact is, is it's a habit for me now. Yeah, it's just something that I want. And just doing an herbal, it's just amazing that I just bring this into a habit I already have. And, boy, I just, I can't wait. <laughs> Especially with that oat straw you were talking about. <laughs> Especially that oat straw, indeed. <laughs> I, mean, I, must, I must admit that red clover, in addition to being a cancer preventative and cancer curative herb, is also an herb of fertility. Okay. And so I always tell people that if you drink oat straw infusion one day and red clover the next day, send me the picture of the baby. Okay. Okay. Very good. okay. Well, Susan Weed, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program here, and I'd like you to stay on the line after we go out. Um, but uh, could you please go ahead and give your website out again one more time? That's www.susanweed.com. Now, I keep the sun in Susan, S-U-S-U-N, but my daughter, who runs the website, bought both website addresses. So you can keep the sun in Susan, or you can make it sand, <laughs> whether you go to susanweed.com or susanweed.com, and you're going to find lots of information about simple ways to keep yourself healthy well past 50. 
Okay, very good. Well, Susan, again, it's been a pleasure to have you on our program today. And, uh, again, stay on the line, and we'll be back with you as, as soon as I close out here. I want to thank you, the listeners out there, for joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio program. Please be sure to visit us at our website at beyond50radio.com. That's the number 50 with a 50. Sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter and also visit us at our blog where we'll be posting this particular interview as well so that you can listen to it or even send it to uh, friends. I mean, after all, that's what this is all about, is being able to share good information uh, for our community out there. I uh, would also like to uh, encourage you uh, to send any questions or comments you have about our program, or maybe even show ideas as well. Just simply submit me an email. Daniel at beyond50radio.com is my email address, and we certainly welcome you there. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to the Beyond 50 Radio program, and remember, live your day past halfway. Thank you.